ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we have some gentlemen on. Can you join me in specially welcoming Mr. Okweyemi Imano to Hangout Cafe for uh, this is our first, um, I think this is a gosh, I think this is the eighth um, season. I think I can't remember now. And he's the first person here for our new season. So welcome, 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 welcome. And uh, like I said earlier on, it is a pleasure to have you here. And thank you so much for agreeing to do this. We really do appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing me to be the first guest. Yes. Um, I, I've always watched, uh, well, try and watch it, even uh, when I'm in Nigeria as well. So sitting on the other side here is certainly an experience. <laughs> but, okay, but thank you. Right. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the welcomes from everyone. Thank you. So today's topic is leveraging fintech for positive wealth management um mm. that is a topic that even i'm not too sure about but that's why you're here that's why yeah. an expert so to speak to come and tell us a little bit more about it but before we go into that tell us a little bit about yourself tell us about what you do who you are so that our audience can know more about you so. okay so my name is jeremy emmanuel um i Gosh, where do I start from? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I am a man of many talents. I'd like to say that. I like um, that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm into technology. Okay. Um, I am also into, well, I've recently become an entrepreneur, business owner. Okay. Um, I'm into wealth management. Um, my first call is finance, uh, sorry, is uh, technology. So I've spent the last... Uh, 25 years of my life uh, being involved in technology, notably Microsoft Technologies. Um, also, um, I'm into music. So a significant part of my life was into producing music, being a DJ as well. Uh, for the church that I go to, I was um, the radio DJ. So we had a ministry called Jesus House Radio. So I was one of the people involved in that. Um, what else? Um, and then recently I've gone more into financial technology as opposed to technology itself, which is what fintech is, financial technology. Um, married, got two children, um, try and live life. Um, I spend a considerable time, amount of my time in Nigeria now. Um, and I also manage a company in Nigeria called Xavier McAllister, which uh, some people have said is a bit of a tongue twister. Yes, uh, <laughs> remember I had to ask you that. How do you pronounce that? Yeah, but the thing is, you remember it, so that's that's yes, yes. part of the uh, branding of it. And um, it's a proprietary trading firm. Okay, can uh, you pronounce it again slowly for us? Okay, so I think the easiest thing is to ignore the X at the beginning and just say Xavier McAllister. Okay. Xavier McAllister. Okay. And if it makes it easier for you, you can just say XM. XM. Okay. Oh. Yes, so what the company is, is um, we are a prop trading firm. Uh, we are based, well, companies in the UK, but we have branches in Nigeria, also in India and Lebanon as well. Um, wow. Yes, um, but my main focus at the moment is in Nigeria. And uh, what we have are investors and traders that we train uh, to trade some of the financial strategies that we use. And uh, we coach them and teach them how to trade, how to invest, and we offer them up, um, job opportunities. Um, and that's that's really what the company does. Um, we basically special we invest in financial assets like currencies, commodities, indexes, and try and make a profit from that. Okay, thank you very much. You're so, welcome. how did you get into this? Ah, big question. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so my. Uh, I've always been involved in IT, so I suppose this is IT and technology coming together. Um, I have no um, qualifications in finance, economics, so there are probably people on this call that are more experienced than I am. The majority of what I know comes from the University of YouTube and Google. <laughs> so I have not gone to have any, I haven't gone to study economics or you know had an MBA in finance or anything but one thing I am is a quick learner and somebody who knows how to put things together so um, for the last um, 
10 years whilst I worked in IT, one of the things that I've always been interested in is uh, investments and trading. And um, whilst working, doing my normal nine to five, um, on the side, I'll, you know, do investments, I'll trade. Um, and I realized after a while that it was becoming hard for me to work and, uh, you know, trade at the same time. I mean, I mean, there are times when I'll be on my lunch break and also having my mobile phone trying to look for the latest market, the latest move. So um, I believe four years ago, um, I, I, I had to look at some of the strengths that I had. And one thing that I believe I've developed, in, I'm not saying I'm completely sex, successful in it, is um, putting resources together and leading those resources. And as I sort of developed that, um, professionally and also in the church that I go to, yeah. um, I decided to use those skills together and put a company together. Uh, I looked at where my base would be. I, initially, I was going to do this in the UK. Um, but then on a trip to Nigeria, I realized how many opportunities were available in Nigeria. So um, by the grace of God, I managed to put this company together. Um, and this happened just before well, I think about uh, a year before COVID, we managed to put the company together, employ the right staff, give them the relevant training, and subsequently started going back and forth from Lagos, sorry, from Lagos to London, and then also managing to um, train the users remotely from the UK. So what this has done is allowed me to manage individuals, train them in how we uh, trade, perform investments also uh, learn about individuals as well and kind of give them some leadership capabilities. And um, yeah, that's really what uh, what led me to set the company up. Okay, so it's not just training them to be traders, but also developing their leadership skills and... Yes, and paying them a salary as well, employing them, um, giving them relevant bonuses uh, for the sort of work that they do. Great. Okay, so let's talk about how do we leverage um, fintech to manage? Uh, okay. To help us because I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first thing I'm going to say, and I think I, I'll say it again, I'm not a financial advisor. Okay. So anything I do say here, you need to go and do your own homework yeah. and do your own research. So please don't quote me and say, oh, Mr. Emmanuel said I should buy a whole load of bitcoins here and there. That's not what I'm saying. You need to do your research. Yeah. But um, what I'm going to try and talk about are things that you can do um, to create wealth for yourselves. Um, so you might... Let me stop you. Um, yes. Sorry, just before you go. Why is this important, actually? In this uh, okay, so for me, it's very important. Um, I'm about to click uh, well, a certain age. Uh, I don't think I can keep on continuing to do my nine to five. Um, so for those of us who are reaching that age, we now need to start thinking of how our money can work for us because you know, I don't think all of us are gonna be able to continue to work until we're 70. So you need to now start making some decisions that will yeah. allow your money to work for you instead of you trying to work for money. And there's some passive um, income uh, schemes that you can get involved in that will allow for this. So doing a nine to five is great, but there's only so much that you can do when it comes to nine to five. I mean, I work as an IT contractor as well, and I know that some of the projects that I've had to work on involve me traveling to places like Dubai, Ireland, um, you know, all of the other places in the world. Now it's great to do that, but I still want to spend time with my family. So that is so important. So you need to start looking at other things that you can do. They do say multiple streams of income. Um, so, um, you know, at this point in, in our lives, especially as we begin to grow older, yeah. these are things that we need to look at. And not just for people who are looking, who are growing older, but even younger people. This is, uh, it's, it's great to be able to do these things earlier. The amount of opportunities that are out there, especially where, um, you know, you know um, decentralized finance is concerned. Um, it's phenomenal. These opportunities were not available to us. So uh, even at a younger age, now is the right time to start doing this. Absolutely. So what is so, so the question itself, um, what should we be doing uh, 
to leverage fintech. So let, let me just um, go through some um, kind of a, some kind of short background into what um, fintech's about. So um, there have been great advances in uh, financial technology. One of them is um, they well, we call it D DeFi, which is decentralized finance. And what is that? Is that basically at the moment and traditionally uh, financial operations are centralized when you want to transfer funds to, a, to you know from one area to another where do you go you go to your bank your bank manager has to approve a certain way funds are being done so that's our normal approach and it does take time so i know if i wanted to transfer a thousand pounds to your bank account i know i can do it on my app the only reason that is happening instantaneously is because the banks have got some swift protocol that allows them to do that but um, the process itself is quite long and is regulated and is controlled. But with decentralized finance, there are other ways that you can use to transfer funds and there are other ways that um, there are other things that you can do that has kind of changed how the banking sector works. Yeah. So, for instance, if you wanted to use crypto technologies or crypto assets to transfer funds to one person to another, it's quite easy to do. I could easily set up a crypto account you could set one up and within five minutes we can transfer funds over. Uh, exactly. yes, you're going to explain what all of that means. I shall try. I shall try. <laughs> I shall try. So, um, so, so let's, let, I mean, these are the um, uh, great things that have happened that instead of you um, using the traditional methods of banking, so for instance, you wanted to get a bank loan, you go to the bank and go through the long process of trying to get a bank loan you could actually go to a nfl sorry a crypto provider for instance who does something similar to a bank and get a bank loan that way at a um, lower rate of interest you could actually even become someone who provides loan capabilities so you could join a banking pool or sorry a crypto lending pool put your money into that crypto lending pool via peer-to-peer -peer lending and you could begin to generate profits from that now, these are investment schemes that would not easily be available to you, but using, uh, you, you know, DeFi technologies and also all of the other pools that are available, these are ways that you can sort of begin to make uh, returns. Um, one of them that a lot of people do right now is um, staking and yield farming. So what exactly is that? Uh, you buy um, a token like a crypto coin, for instance, and you basically say that, or you look for a particular organization that um, has pools, crypto pools, and then you invest your funds into that pool itself. And when the value of that pool begins to go up, then you make money from that as well. So the first point is you need to buy a, um, a, a, you know, a virtual asset like a crypto coin a token. And rather than just okay, I bought a token, I'm holding on to it. You are investing that token into this organization, this high yield organization on the basis that uh, a lot of interest is going to come into that organization and then you'll be able to make um, a return from it. Okay. Um, there are other things like uh, fractionization, which is a new topic. Now, what exactly is that? Uh, so imagine, um, Pastor Pinker, you and your friends decided to buy a house for about a hundred thousand pounds. Let's just say for argument's sake. Now you want to sell that house and you can easily put it on the market, but you could do something called token fractionalization, which is you put that house on the market um, on 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 at a provider that does that, and then you invite people to buy bits of the house. So when I mean bits, I'm not talking about the doors, the windows, but basically <laughs> a fraction of the house, okay. which means if you have several people buying fractions of that house itself, okay. the value of what you put in that house can actually increase. So you could go, you know, if you had, if you managed to generate enough interest with yeah. several people actually buying that property, the value of what you would get back in return by crypto assets could be more than that. So it could be more than 100,000 than you originally bought in. So normally when you'd buy a house, it'd be, okay, I'm buying this house, I'm putting it on the market, you get several people, uh, you know, 
or you get an estate agent to try and sell it to you at the value. But if you've now got several people who have bought this house using crypto tokens, for instance, and the yeah. value of that crypto token, the value of the coin that you used to uh, underlie the asset itself began yeah. to increase, then there are potentials for you to make a huge return. There are quite a number of people doing that as well. So, wait, okay. So in this case, what you just said now, mm. so if eventually you want to sell the house, okay, I guess because the value would have gone up, so yeah. people will be able to get their investment back. Mm. Yes. Okay. So, so the coins, okay. So the way it would work is you would launch what is called an an ICO, which is an initial coin offering. Okay. And people would now invest into that coin, which is attached to the house. Right. What you're really doing is getting a lot of interest in okay. the value of the coin because people believe, okay, if this house is worth, I'm, I only use 100,000 as an example, but if you had a house, let's just say something like the Shard, for instance, as an example, someone launched an ICO on the Shard and then several people started buying that particular coin. The value of a coin goes up, but hey, you still own the shard. Okay. Now, at some point, investors may say, well, I've had enough. The value of this coin has gone up, so I want to now pull out from it. And they can basically sell their positions and leave that particular ICO. So that's another way of, of doing that. And um, quite a lot of people are involved in doing that as well. Um, another one is NFTs or NFTSs which are yeah yes. we hear a lot about i've seen nft all over the place but i don't know i don't have a clue what that means <laughs> well Bosman gets the most craziest thing <laughs> but you'd be amazed how crazy things now become uh you know ways of creating wealth so what is an nft it's basically um um anything that can be captured and then tokenized so i'll give you an example um okay. yeah yeah, a couple of people that we know that are artists. So um, Hannah, for instance, uh, passed the chisel as well. Now, let's imagine they... Uh, sorry. <laughs> so I'm just reading the comments. Someone's asking okay, me. Yes, please, please explain to me. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll try as much as I can. Okay, so let, let's use the um, NFT example. So I'm an artist. I've painted a picture of Pastor Funke. Yeah. And I've said... And I've basically... You know, everyone has seen this picture in Jesus' house, and they've said, oh, what a lovely picture. Yeah. I then tokenize that picture. In other words, I create a digital asset and tie it to that picture. And I say, because of the fact that there's a lot of interest in this picture, yeah. I'm going to tokenize it. And I, I am the first person that owns that token. That means I've created a value in the token itself. Okay. Now, because everybody loves you, Pastor Funke, everybody says, okay, we're going to invest in this token. So the value of that token now goes up. And what I can then do is sell it or continue to keep it as the price goes up. So let's just, uh, and I'm using you as an example, let's just say, you know, three, 5,000 people in Jesus' house had a very much interest in that picture and the token and people decided to do, you know, to buy or invest in the token itself that is attached to that picture. Okay. then the value goes up. Now, remember, I still own the picture. Yeah. It's still mine. Now, maybe I shouldn't have used myself as an example. Let's say I painted a picture of you and then you decided to tokenize that picture. So in other words, you made an NFT of your picture and then you uploaded it. Okay. You begin to make profits from that. And the only reason you're making profits is because you were the first person that tokenized, tokenized that the picture. picture. Okay. So no one else will be able to do that because the token is assigned to your picture right. and the price of that or the value of the token is going up. Okay. Now someone else could probably take another picture and say, well, I've taken a picture of Pastor Finke and I've graded it in a certain color. So I've created another token. But because you were the first person who put their token up there, yeah. then in that respect, that's how the value is being made. Now, it sounds weird and wonderful, but... It's, it's okay, let me try and understand it because it's not making <laughs> sense. It's not <laughs> making sense to me. I will, so... try, I will try and explain this as much as I can. <laughs> so I have the token. So how do, yeah, exactly what I was just going to say. So how do others make profit from this? Okay, so remember, 
you're investing in the value of the token. The token will go up. So I... This, this value is an artificial value. It's... So, okay, so let's just... Let's explain the process. You've got the token there. I then join that company that's, that's, that's um, where you've hosted the token. And I just say, here's my £100. I'm going to put it against Pastor Funke's token. Right. Pastor Funke's picture token. Okay. The token is worth £1,000 because a whole lot of Jesus House people decided to buy it. it okay. Next week, it now goes £2,000. Because you've got a share in it, yeah. you're now getting more. So what you've invested in it is oh. now increasing in value. And it keeps on happening that way. You then wake up and say, well, I don't want any of you guys to make money anymore. So I pull it out and everybody loses their money, which can happen. So we need to be aware of those risks as well. So the first person can pull out at any time. Absolutely. And there's that, nothing you can do about it, even if well, you invest it. Which now comes on to what um, we are talking about, which is to do with um, uh, decentralized finance. Now, a lot of... Uh, what we have on the centralized finance, <laughs> someone says what, um, yes. <laughs> is a, a, one, one, one of the issues that really is a problem is the fact that these um, investment schemes are not regulated. They're not designed to be regulated. Mm -hmm. The government is trying to regulate, but on, well, because by design, they're not meant to be regulated. So in effect, if you are investing in any of these schemes, you have to understand that this is a risk but the potential to make returns are higher than you following the traditional methods. So, so I guess if it's, I guess, like you said, it's a risk you have to take. You have to be absolutely. bold enough. And then I guess knowing the right time to pull out. A absolutely. Yes. And there's another one as well for mothers out there or fathers out there. So um, we've, we've, we, I know a lot of our children play video games. So, yeah, I mean, my, my 12 year old son, plays video games non-stop and we're trying to wean him off it. But um, you, you'll be amazed that, do you, you know um, your children can actually get money, I, as in get paid for playing video games. So there are some games provides, providers, I think one of them is called AXIE Infinity. And the more they win while they're playing these games, the more crypto coins they could earn. So they would register on to this uh, site, I believe, well, AXIE um, Waves Dock is another one as well. And um, they register, play the games, buy a number of crypto coins. And as they're playing those games, as they're winning, they actually get paid because the crypto coin that they've bought, or the, I keep on mentioning crypto coin, but yes, the, the um, digital token that they may have bought, which is tied to them, will begin to increase in value as well. So if you have a child that is a very avid and active gamer who knows how to play games this could potentially be a source of income for them as well okay now going back to the other um you know ways of being able to make wealth by fintech um using um Sorry, um let's, can you just answer this question before you go on i actually asked how do you convert or can you convert these tokens or cryptocurrency into real world currency it's quite straightforward to do, but although, so let, we'll give an example. So Binance is a company that you can buy crypto coins from, and there are various of the of, other ones that you can find out on the internet. So you basically, uh, let's use crypto for example. Crypto is currently uh, $40,000 uh, for one crypto coin. Okay, and the major, but, I don't, have for one. I don't have forty thousand dollars for one. I don't have forty thousand dollars, but so, <laughs> but what you do is you buy it in uh, in in like um, satoshis, which are breakdowns. So like it's like naira kobo. So you can buy smaller amounts of okay. it okay. instead. Okay. So you buy your crypto tokens and you buy them from this, you know, from the crypto token provider. Mm -hmm. um, once you do that. The important thing is that you have um, cryptocurrencies and crypto to tokens. And if the price of the assets, for instance, Bitcoin goes up, then all you need to do is sell it. Sell it means you're pulling out and you can get your money back in cash. Now, some banks in the UK are beginning to clamp down on this. So Halifax, I believe, 
um, will not allow you to um, withdraw funds from, uh, you know, Binance or some other reserve company. So you need to be sure what, you know, if your bank will allow you yeah. to actually get your funds back. Uh, I believe there are some other smaller banks that will allow you to do that. So really, you just need to check. Does your bank allow you, does your bank allow you to uh, receive payments from a crypto provider, from a crypto platform? Yeah, I think I remember seeing in one of the, um, on the internet, this guy who had this lo lots of money, but his bank wouldn't allow him to. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so some will. So it's just a case of doing your research and finding out which ones will allow you, which ones won't. Um, Nigeria, for instance, um, total ban on being able to get your money out. Um, and, and I'll say this, if you are doing stuff in Nigeria um, with cryptocurrencies, you've got to be very careful because... Um, if you're doing it at high scale, then the likelihood is that you'll have your account closed down. Wow. So that's something to be to to bear in mind. Um, what else? Um, so I think um, the other things that you can do is that you can join a liquidity provision pool. And I'm not going to mention the names because this is being recorded, and I don't want to be seen as me promoting any of these companies or organisations. But what basically is a liquidity provision for you? It's an organization that uh, will allow you to put your money into their liquidity provision pool. And that money will be tied against the development of blockchain technology. So your next question is, what is blockchain technology? So blockchain technology is a technology that um, holds Bitcoins, Ethereum, um, all of the other tokens that you buy in order for you to um, you know make transactions on 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 the internet um, so the technology basically allows us to use tokens as opposed to money to make transactions so i'll try and explain it again how do you go to let's let's use your debit card transactions yeah when you go to tesco's to buy fuel yeah you put your credit card in uh, it gets approved by the um, credit card company and okay. Swift as well. Mm -hmm. And they release your funds to the, uh, to Tesco pumps. Right. For that to happen, banks have to agree all of that stuff. Now it happens so so quick, but because the protocols have already been agreed. Yeah. With uh, blockchain and, and, and blockchain technologies, you're not going by a bank. So let's just, use you and i for an example i have a blockchain wallet you have a blockchain wallet there's nothing concerning the bank it's peer-to-peer -peer. you want to go to tesco to fill up your tank you give me a call dj i mean can i fill up my uh tank with your wallet i say yes you go to tesco's you fill it up and do what you need to do we have not involved the bank in this right. Banks don't even have a clue what we're doing. Okay. Basically, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, that means that the whole transactions that we've just done are decentralized because it does not involve the bank. The bank. Okay. They don't have a clue. And that's why the banks want to clamp down on it because it's not regulated and they can't regulate it. Mm -hmm. but, it but the way we have to look at it is that I've just, for instance, I could give you a hundred pound. Yeah. Got nothing to do with the bank. Whatever you pay me back, it's got nothing to do with the banks. But if I paid you a hundred pounds with my, you know, if I did a bank to bank transfer with you, yeah. and for some reason, the money went somewhere, you can go back to your bank. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is, I mean, I've just given you a layman terms how decentralized finance works and how blockchain helps with that. So blockchain is a technology that allows that. It allows us to have agreements on a peer-to-peer -peer basis okay. and blockchain technology allows you to buy bitcoins cryptocurrency what is a bitcoin i'm sure someone's gonna ask yes yes <laughs> okay <laughs> so a bitcoin is a token it's not money that you can hold it's an agreement that you have with a blockchain provider saying yes you have this amount of virtual tokens in a platform somewhere and those virtual tokens can be converted to cash when you pull them out. Now, Bitcoin as a financial asset has a, although you can't hold it, but there is a price of Bitcoin. 
Okay. So, like I said, Bitcoin is currently, I, I think it's about, I can't remember because I haven't, I think it's about $35,000 for one Bitcoin. Now, that's the value of Bitcoin. If, let, let's use an example again. So, let's use a wallet that, that I explained. I've said you can have access to my uh, Bitcoin wallet and you can go to Tesco's to buy what you need to buy. Now, if the value of Bitcoin dropped, and we know that happens quite a lot, yeah. it means that the value of the financial asset that I have is less. Yeah. Now, compared to your normal currencies, whereby, as we know, sterling, the value of sterling drops and goes up, you know, in pennies yeah. because of, uh, you know, macroeconomical reasons. With Bitcoin, the value can, or, or even any cryptocurrency, can actually change you know, so suddenly. Yeah. And why does this happen? So, um, for instance, the war in Ukraine that has happened has had an impact on Bitcoin itself or cryptocurrencies simply because what affects a cryptocurrency is the technology behind it and the amount of people that are trying to uh, mine the Bitcoin. I won't go into mining because it will take a lot of time to explain. Mm -hmm. But there are several things that can drastically affect the price of a cryptocurrency. If the government made an announcement today to say, right, we're going to seize all the Bitcoins in the world, the price of Bitcoin is going to drop. Yeah. Or if the government made an announcement to say, we are going to start regulating Bitcoin in the UK, the price will drop immediately. When the Nigerian government started clamping down on Bitcoin, and Nigeria happens to be one of the largest countries in the world where Bitcoin transactions are being made, the value dropped. So the problem, and what we need to be aware of, is if we are using any of these, um, uh, you know, new technologies to make profit. So I've mentioned, um, you know, stock, you know, um, you know, staking, lending, you know, joining peer-to-peer -peer, uh, liquidity providers. We need to be aware that the value of our crypto assets could go down, and they could actually increase as well. So if you're someone that doesn't like taking risks, this certainly isn't something that you should be involved in. Yeah. Um, for people that I advise, I always say, if you're going to invest in any of these schemes, yeah. invest in what you are potentially prepared to lose. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by that? Don't go and take your school fees for your children, as people have done <laughs> in the past. I say, okay, there's school fees to pay, but if I invest in this scheme, I'll make some money tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. Um, it has, you know, they are, they, they are um, risky, um, you know, investments, but you've got to be aware that you could potentially mm -hmm. make a loss. Yeah. Um, what what I, 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 I know I might sound a bit, um, but why would anyone want to get involved in investing in things that you can see, um, these things that are not regulated and you can lose money like that. I know shares and invest I mean shares the same thing can happen. But mm. this one is not even regulated. Why would anybody want to one is it, wait, is it not is it not greed? No, not not necessarily okay. I'll give you an example. Okay. Um two, three years ago, um JP Morgan said they had they were against cryptocurrencies, oh it was gonna blow up. Uh Morgan Stanley have said the same. Guess what? Mm. They are involved in that now. Okay. They are buying. I'm um, buying a lot of, uh, of of cryptocurrencies and and, uh, and and actually supporting blockchain technology. This and if you check, they were, you know, really against it. Actually, before, I think for the last three years, they were saying, "Oh, you can't do it. Oh, it's a bubble." But they're the ones pushing it now. So why would you want to do that? The traditional banks are giving you a very low interest rate because the governments of the world, because of COVID and other reasons, are saying, "Well, you've got to reduce." whatever rate you are yet, you know, giving to your investors. So for some of you who've got your money in your bank accounts, you're, 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 you're losing money. You're not getting anything back. Some banks are giving you 0 0.05 APR per year. What's the point? You might as well just, you know, put it in your cupboard somewhere. So people are looking for investment vehicles that can give them better returns for their money. Okay. Um, but, at the same time, you actually have to take calculated risks. So you could buy a house and that house could lose the value. It can happen, although it doesn't always happen. Yeah. But we, let's not say, it, um, fair enough, you would 
hedge it against, you know, with insurance. You would make sure, okay, other things, uh, you know, would secure you against a huge loss. But imagine you buy a house and then all of a sudden there's a sinkhole. You, 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 so sinkhole is basically when a huge hole happens on the road in front of your house. It will potentially, you know, you know, devalue the property itself. So that is a risk. Yeah. And you, you can't just say, I'm not going to take any risk. I think it's calculated risks and know what you're prepared to lose. Yes. So some, I mean, I've heard people, I've met people, especially in Nigeria, who have in, put their funds in investment schemes. And I'll, you know, I'll speak about that as well. And they'll say, oh, um, I invested in this scheme and I lost all my money. And, you know, I don't, I'm not interested in anything to do with forex trading or, uh, you know, wealth management and stuff like that. And I then ask, and I dig deeper and I say, okay, what did you do? What research did you do? Oh, I didn't do anything. I just handed over the funds to the person. And that is some, you know, that's where the problems begin to come in. Yeah. Um, you invest in something that you don't have a lot of knowledge on. Yeah. Um, Afro funds in Nigeria, for, uh, sorry, ag agricultural funds, uh, in Nigeria at the moment are really getting a, a bad press because a lot of people have invested in those and have lost a lot of money. Now, when I dig further and I ask, well, okay, why have you lost money? It's not a case that someone scammed them. It's just a case that, okay, things have changed. Um, using Nigeria, using that particular example, yes. um, the government of Nigeria said, yes, uh, we want to invest in agricultural technology. Uh, they brought in so many regulated providers to provide um, sort of, um, you know, investment platforms. People then put funds into them. But then there's been the Boko Haram crisis. There's been the Herzman crisis in Nigeria, which has prevented people from going to the farms to support those funds. And unfortunately, it has all dropped. So that is a loss. Now, that, 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 if you now compare that to someone who invested in some Ponzi scheme, and what is a Ponzi scheme? What basically, Ponzi? Um, some dodgy scheme whereby the profits were built upon the more people you bring. Uh, when someone like the pyramid thing, absolutely, okay. that's a different thing because all you've done is you've put your funds into someone's hands and they run off with your money. Okay. Now, but the failure of a fund uh, or the failure of an investment scheme should not be seen as oh, I was scammed or um, I'm not going to invest. You have to do your research and know what you're investing in. That's the important thing to look at. And nowadays, the internet is a blessing. It's not just a case of handing over funds to people. I mean, I could tell, I mean, I could sit down and just say, oh, um, invest in my company and I'll give you 100% return. And I could say that to you and you'd be so happy to do it. But if you now don't do your homework, yeah. then you have to take some responsibility for that blame as well if things go wrong so it's a case of things may go wrong but you've done everything you can to shore up yourself so that if it does if it does go wrong well it's um you know things have gone wrong and you can't control that my wife's got an investment with um high reeves and lansdowne and um that the fund that she's invested in has started to go negative and um you know she was you know, complaining the other day and I said well what do you want to do go and shout in front of their offices in in Dublin I said it's, it's it, these things happen so you have to understand that when you're investing you can make a good return but you could also make some losses um, so the technologies are there for you to harness um, and you're basically moving away from the traditional methods of investing you're joining these liquidity pools can potentially give you about 50% return. I know one that gives you 280% return per year. They are there, okay. but you've got to be wise when you invest in them. I guess it's, um, I guess it'll take time and mm. someone like me to get used to this kind of investment because you're used to the traditional. Um, yeah, but it's not, as, it's not as complicated as you think it is. Once you've got the, the, the it, it, okay, if I say today, go and buy one Bitcoin, go and open up a, 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 a you know, a wallet, yeah. that's the beginning of your journey. Okay. If, I, if, if, you, if you've got your, you know, if you've got a thousand pounds in your bank account and it's sitting there, 
it's just going to sit there because you can't move past that state. You need to have some, ver you, you know, some token, you know, some crypto token yeah. in order for you to start that journey. So the journey begins when you start converting your real cash to cryptocurrencies, to tokens. The journey begins when you start tokenizing your finance. Okay, so for a novice like me, and I'm sure there are other people online who are like that, how do you get started? Where do you even go to to get started? Okay, so you've got to have a plan. What do you want to do? Look at your finances. What do I want to have a return on? Uh, how do I want to start making uh, returns? Then you be begin to look at the uh, token that you want to invest in. Do I want to just simply buy, you know, crypto? Do I want to start doing NFTs instead? Do I want to join a pool of investors? Do I want to, you know, do staking or yield farming? It comes across with what do I actually need to do? How much do I want to live on? How much do I have to risk? How much returns do I want to get? That's where you should first of all start. So let's just say I have five thousand pounds in my bank account, and I or ten thousand, and I just want to invest it in something because it's sitting down in the bank. I could choose to either join one of these liquidity pools, and you can register online for them. You have to do your research. As I said, I can't say or tell you which of them are. Yeah. Um, you could do yield farming, which which is like staking. It, it means you are joining a liquidity for, um, pool but at the same time you're expecting your returns to be higher than average higher than normal at least maybe 250 okay. percent i'm giving you those high figures but you have to also do your research as well if i join this liquidity pool right. this defi liquidity pool this high yield liquidity pool and i'm saying this because afterwards i'm hoping some of you will go on online and research some of these out. Okay. Is that company registered? Mm -hmm. is, or is it some, you know, twenty-one-year-old boy sitting in their, you know, bedroom putting so up is the it website? Registered as in registered with. So, for example, is it registered with companies out or registered with the? Financial? Something like that. You have to do your research. This is this is the thing about it. you have you, you can't just put your money, you know, gives because you've seen some fancy website and then you're thinking I'm gonna. Put, put, put my money on there. I mean, the Instagram platform that we're on, I'm sure a lot of you are already receiving messages saying, oh, join this NFT yes, scheme. A lot. <laughs> Quite a lot of them. So you have to be extremely careful because in as much as there are great returns out there, there are scams as well. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you source out these companies that give you uh, the ability to stake crypto assets uh, or you can also join... Um, a, a, pro, a liquidity provision provision in pool. Sorry, a bit of a long one for me. And if you look for them, check and see who are the backers, how long this company has been around for. That's very important. Uh, the site that they've actually created, how long was it created? Was it just created a couple of weeks ago? Um, you need to follow the, you, you need to have some visibility about them. So listen, I could set up my own liquidity pool. And I'm sure most people that know me will join it. Okay. Uh, so that could work because if things go wrong, yeah, you know where to come and grab you. Yeah. But for people that you don't know about, you actually have to do more due diligence. You need to be able to speak to someone. You need to be able to contact someone. It's not good just to have a web chat. You, it's, it's being able to know, okay, if things go wrong, where can I grab? Yeah. That's the way. And when I'm saying when things go wrong, I'm not saying if the um, the value of the pool went down. I'm saying if they ran off, so if they decided to close the pool down and run off with uh, investors' funds. Yeah. So that we, I mean, need to understand that there's a loss because okay, we made a loss. Uh, the market moved against us. It, you know, conditions have changed as opposed to some guy set up some website you all put your money in it and then and then he pulled everything out and then he ran away so that's we, we need to understand that there's a difference between that so it's really it's having homework. a plan i beg your pardon now saying so we need to do our homework you need to do your homework but the thing is there are great returns that you can make from this your bank is not going to give you 
anything back for what you put into your bank account. Your funds are just going to be sitting there. There's no, and the and I said, I mean, in a meeting that I was in about a, a year ago, I said that in the next, I, 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 let me not say prophesied, but I said in the next 12, 15 years, you're not going to find your traditional banking systems anymore. You're not going to see your retail banks on the streets because things are changing. Yeah. And we have to adapt to that change. Um, and, and the governments know this as well. So they are actually trying to get involved in this. But we have an opportunity to make returns based on these technologies. So it's really a case of us doing our research. Sorry. No, I was just going to ask, um, like you said, a lot of these things, this um, crypto coins and all of this, they're not mm -hmm. regulated. Will having them regulated be of benefit? No, because if they are regulated, it begins to now move what they were originally designed for. So once regulations, say, it, it's uh, okay. It's like, let's use Nigeria for an example. Once any government decides to regulate something, then it means that there are going to be delays in the provision of it and also, you know, the ease of use. So that's the idea. It's, it, it's like, I want to give you a hundred pounds, Pastor okay? Yeah. I don't want to phone up, um, you know, I don't want to... I'm trying to use the to go through somebody too. I don't want to phone up someone and phone up someone and say, ah, um, should I give it to Basel from Care or not? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to be able to do that transaction straight up. Now the banks and all of the other financial institutions go through this process. For instance, if you want to get a bank loan, yeah. yes, there are some banks that will give you, um, you know, instant decision for about two hundred pounds. But if you wanted a bank loan for seventy-five thousand yeah. pounds, yes, you know it would take three three weeks. Yeah. But if you are taking funds from a lending pool, they yeah. can make that decision within five seconds. Okay, I hear you. Mm. But the beauty about regulation, so like the Financial Services Authority, mm. is that if, for example, a bank um, is closed down and you have invested money there, yes. um, you get a compensation. You get That's correct. Like that. That's so, correct. So wouldn't that be a good thing? It's a good thing, but that is the case but it still goes back yes so yeah you are protected by the financial conduct authority yeah. for losses of about eighty five thousand pounds or thereabouts but that that is true but then you have to think of the fact that how much returns are you getting for your okay. investment okay. from the banks the the banks are not set up to you know dosh out money like that mm. they're not meant to they i mean they they make money from your money being yeah. in there Accounts. That's how they make their own funds. I, I'm not a banking professional, so I'm only saying what I, I've observed. But a liquidity pool does not have to spend a lot of time going through a lot of those regulations. All they're doing is bringing people together by technologies and crypto technologies to smoothen that process. Now, the fact that it's not regulated means, yes, there is a high amount of risk, but there's also a high potential for return. And it's being able to make that judgment. And the way you do that is not stake all of your important funds into it. So yes, you can put the whole of your important funds into your bank account. If things went wrong, yes, you get your 85,000 pounds back minimum. But you could do the same thing, or not all of it, not the whole of your funds, a portion of it, a fraction of it in yeah. crypto related uh, asset or platform and take that risk as well, calculated risk. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope I've answered some questions, um, given some kind of information on, on that itself. Um, but the opportunities are there, and I would definitely say uh, this is the time that we need to be looking at this and not shying away from it, um, and not just looking at the focusing on the traditional methods. Right. Um, the, the good thing I will say is, we want to educate our younger ones as well. And they already know all this stuff, but believe me. I mean, if you speak to our young adults, they, I mean, I'm past my age of saying this. They are the ones that know this. And I'm hoping at some stage that, you know, we'll have more opportunities for the younger people to speak about that because they know quite more than we know. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Okay, so. great. If you guys have any questions, please put it in the question box for um, Yemi. Okay, yeah. no one. Um, yes, go on. What else? Yeah.
So, so, um, and uh, well, I, I mean, as I said, the journey begins with like trying to get some crypto assets, trying to get some cryptocurrencies, um, being aware of all of these, um, uh, you know, technologies, all of these investment schemes as well. Um, doing a lot of research online okay. and um, doing background checks on the companies that you want to, you know, uh, be involved in. Um, there's, there's so much out there that could, uh, you know, for instance, um, um, there's a guy that I work with and um, he's recently built his own blockchain platform. And yes, it's hard to do that, but there's potential for him to become a millionaire in a very short space of time. Okay. So it's really being aware of these things. And I think the important thing, as I said at the beginning, is we are at a point in time in our lives whereby we need our money to work for us mm. and uh, not just, you know, work for our money. <laughs> okay, um, a... Karma Shine Collection. <laughs> Great, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, and um, yeah, thank you for, for those kind words. Um, does anybody else, sorry, I don't know how he's wrong, but you know. No, no, yeah, anybody but, else, any question? You, the other thing you haven't um, talked hmm. about is um, Metaverse. Metaverse. Yes. Okay, so what is metaverse? Okay, um, another big word. So, metaverse is what we will now describe as Web three. So we're currently in Web two, Internet two. So Internet one was when you would send an email, you know, or just being able to look at static web pages. Internet two is where we are now. So you can go back and forth with internet discussions. We use chat. Metaverse, which is Web3, is basically um, the virtual capabilities of the internet. So we are kind of in Metaverse now because we're having this video conference, but it goes more than that. In other words, if I had one of these um, virtual gadgets yeah. and I put them on, I would actually see a representation of you, Pastor Funke, as opposed to using my mobile phone. And I'll live in this world. I'll be in your living room with Doc. We'll be having this meeting. We'll probably have everybody in this meeting yeah. that we're on now having a physical, rep well, a, um, not a physical, a virtual representation of who they are. Yeah. So it's, it's and, and if you imagine how that is, so uh, COVID, for instance, where we all worked from home, we did our teleconferencing. Imagine if we had that virtual setup whereby you actually felt like, yes, we were in the room with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we'd have this. I saw it, um, I think. Oh, um, what's her name? Oprah in interviewed Obama. Okay. And they did something like that, and it was oh, wow. we're in the same room. Oh wow! Okay, all right. I, I didn't watch it, but that's 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 a great um, uh, one, one to see. But I mean, imagine the, um, you know, I wouldn't like to say, but a metaverse church on a Sunday yeah. morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whereby we are, you know, we're having church itself. It actually feels that like when you put this headset on, I can actually, you know, feel that someone is there. That's a bit of a controversial statement to say, but I mean, even work, you're at work in the metaverse itself. So where are the profits going to be made from this? Um, it'll be companies who begin to develop the technologies uh, that support metaverse. So I've just said church, for instance, there could be an organization that sets up a metaverse for churches, for works, metaverse parties, metaverse Nigerian weddings. Who knows wow. how, how, how things will go from there? Um, uh, yes, uh, someone's asked me if I can share the uh, DeFi platform. I'm afraid I can't do that. Um, but the ones that you've listed, yes, it is one of them. Um, so I can't give any recommendations. Uh, but the ones that, that you have listed, it, it, it's, it's one of them. Okay. okay. Hope that um, has helped. <laughs> I, I hope so. But um, I, I think what I would just say is, um, I mean, I'm happy to have... Um, you know, if anybody has any questions, I'm always... Uh, yes, I, uh, you can send me a DM. Send me a direct Yes, yes, you can do that. Um, but as I always keep on saying, I am not a financial uh, professional. I don't uh, make any recommendations. Um, I can only give you academic knowledge of what I know yeah. and point you in the right sites of where you should go as well. Thank you so much. This has been um, quite enlightening. I will, I, I, I will try. I'm going to do my due diligence, and maybe I will get on board too.
I think you should. I think I think the uh, NFT example is um is one that uh, for those who are artists, for those who draw, for those who make music, yeah. um, this is the time to start use, doing that. Um, so if you, I mean, I know there are some parents on here that their children draw very well. So yes, this is a uh, something that you should start getting involved in. Um, and who knows? I mean, I know they're saying there's an NFT bubble, so. It doesn't mean these opportunities are always going to be there, but it could be that things then begin to change. So take advantage of them. Okay. Yeah, Tutu has just shared his um, Instagram handle. So anybody that wants to reach out to Okwayemi can reach him through his Instagram handle. That's it up there. Actually, Fantastic. Let me, let me pin it so that anyone... No, Instagram, they keep adding new features. Okay. It's interesting now. You can like comments. I didn't. That's a new thing. Oh, this must have just happened in the last two or three weeks because mm. that was in there. Well, <laughs> this is my first instant, like, um, Instagram uh, live chat, so I, and I and I quite enjoyed it. So I think I might even start. <laughs> yeah, to, you should. Sure. You should well. start running, um, having yeah. sessions. Yeah, yeah. Share. No, seriously, because it's you're educating us. I'm and trying to, as much as I can. And you know, I was before I came on um, today. I was listening to this um, gentle, one um, church in Nigeria, okay. and they were talking. They had this guy who was talking about um, uh, creating wealth like the Jews do. Very mm -hmm. interesting. I'll send you the. Um, oh, please do. I'd like to. I'd like really, to. Really, really good. I kept the facts. I kept thinking, oh my goodness, I wish mm. I'd known a lot of this before. Yeah. I started. Yeah. But he said something. He said, um, when you've been blessed. Mm. that the more you share the more mm. god will bless you absolutely so yes. we need to keep sharing whatever information we have share it with others well a lot of or sometimes we just want to hold it so that nobody else will have the information but it's well i mean that's i mean you're amazed about the things that are given for free mm. on the internet people publish things on there for free and yes you are you are right about that the more you share the more you receive so there's no, there's no point in hoarding. And one thing I've learned is when you hoard, eventually God will give it to someone else yep. to give to others. Yep. So you're going to end up losing in the end. Yeah. So yeah. definitely we should, we should do all we can to share. Uh, and one of the reasons why I'm so quite passionate about this is, and if, if I could say for people of color as well, it's important for us to be involved in these uh, wealth creation and wealth mm -hmm. management uh, you know, uh, n getting that knowledge itself or being a part of this, it will help us. It will help us to develop our communities yes. um, and give into communities as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be. I'll share. I'll share with all of you. I'll share with everyone um, this video. I'll put the link. Well, well, actually, I'm not sure I can put a link on mine, but I'll share it, and then you can share it with other people. But it was really good. Really good. This um, video. Okay. Was Yes. Somebody's asked a question about, uh, is there a particular NFT? I, I, if you just, as I said, I can't recommend any. So please Google NFT or send me a private message instead. And I'll help you look into that as well. Yeah. I shall um, be talking to you more about all of this. <laughs> I'm happy to give as much information as I can. Okay. So thank you so much. Um, is there anything else? Um, um, I don't think there is any, I mean, no, uh, this is what I wanted to speak about. I mean, there's um, trading and stuff like that. Um, but, but that's, this is the, I mean, the focus for me is us using fintech to develop our, our, our you know, to, to get returns and to be, um, you know, to basically advance ourselves, um, advance for the kingdom as well. So that's where the focus is. Okay. And if you guys want to, again, reach out to him, if you want to find out more about trading, reach out to him. Um, and he'll, I'm sure he, and like you said, he wouldn't mind um, sharing information with you guys, right? Okay. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Did thank you. you. Thank you. It's been a blessing. I really do pleasure. appreciate you. Thank you. And folks, thank you very much. We'll see you guys next week, um, Saturday, same time, by the grace of God. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.